Welcome to the Music Corner. I'm Jonathan Keel, your host for today's program. We're going to be talking about uh, rhythm guitar today. Hopefully in the next 30 minutes we're going to make you a better musician and have some fun along the way. Uh, rhythm guitar, the heart of guitar playing. Most rock and roll bands is the heart of the band. Rhythm guitar is found in all different kinds of music. That's why we're going to focus on it today. Today's program is going to be a follow-up to a previous program that you might have seen. Uh, the previous program featured what's commonly known as the Boom Chicka Strum. I'll illustrate that in a minute. What we're going to do in today's program is introduce bass note runs and some other embellishments to the previously mentioned Boom Chicka Strum. So what I'm going to do is first illustrate where we've been before today and then we'll pick up where we left off. The Boom Chicka Strum, just to recap, I'm going to illustrate it with a G major chord. It has this basic sound. Sounds good at a medium speed, used for faster songs too. The sky's the limit. You can alternate bass notes like this. You can stay on one bass note like I'm doing right now, but it gets a little old pretty quickly. Okay, so the boom chicka strum. Now, uh, for those of you who haven't seen the previous program, let's uh, recap when you're going to use this or where you might find the boom chicka strum in our popular music. Bluegrass music, for sure, country music, folk music, and the technique, even though it's not, um, even though it has a bluegrass sound, the technique of reaching in and hitting a specific heavy string and then answering back with lighter strings is a technique that's found in all different types of rhythm guitar playing. Um, but clearly it has a bluegrass country kind of flavor to it. If that's your style of music, stick around for the next 30 minutes. If you have other styles of music you prefer, stick around too, because like I said, this technique, the aim involved, uh, the contrasting sounds involved between the heavy string and the lighter strings, is a, a technique and a, a style you're going to want to use in almost any kind of rhythm guitar playing you can imagine. Okay, so let's get down to business here. Today's uh, lesson is going to emphasize the G, C, and D chords. If you are a pro at those chords, perfect. If you're not quite up to speed on those chords, now is your chance, or this should be your inspiration to get good at G, C, and D. And if you don't even play the guitar, but you're curious, definitely stick around, because uh, hopefully I'm going to demystify a little bit of the guitar. Um, we've heard, you know, most of us, you grew up in our culture, we hear guitar all the time for, for our whole lives. And it can seem like a mysterious kind of thing. Uh, certainly can seem fast and hard to figure out. Hopefully today we'll, we'll dispel a little bit of that. Okay, so let's get right down to business. I'm going to play a G chord. I'm going to get started on the boom chicka strum on my G major chord. I'm going to use my middle ring and pinky. Take a look at my left hand for a second. I'm going to use my middle ring and pinky on my left hand to, to hold down my G chord. And there's a specific reason why I'm doing this. It's because G is going to be followed by a C chord. That's what I'm going to do today. And there are a million songs that you're going to find yourself playing that involve G going to C. If you've never done G with this particular combination of fingers before, today's your day to start getting used to it. And it does take a little while to get used to it, but don't worry. Middle, ring, and pinky. Extremely useful for any song that goes from G to C, G to A minor, G to D7, G to G7, okay? Now, many, many people learn G with that combination first. Index, middle, and ring. Nothing wrong with that. You'll find many times when you can use that. But for, day, for today's song and for many songs, let's stick with the middle, ring, and pinky. Okay. So, G chord of the boom chicka strum. Again, here's the, the overall sound we're going for. And then we'll introduce some embellishments. With my right hand, let's focus on the right hand for a second. With my right hand, I'm hitting the sixth string and then the fourth string. Number six is the fattest string, one is the skinniest. Six, a light brush down up, and then four, and a light brush down up. And notice those light brushes are really just on the two or three skinny strings, just a nice light down up. And on your way back up, you might only hit one string, maybe two strings on the way up, that's good. The less you count strings, the better. Don't even worry about how many strings you're hitting when you're doing those nice little brushes, the chicka. Boom, chicka, boom, chicka. I squeeze the pick a little bit when I pluck the first heavy string, and then I relax 
for the strumming. Then I squeeze it again, and then I relax. And that, get, that gets that nice, that helps to get that nice contrasting sound. The contrast between the heavier strings and the lighter strings. And eventually your, your uh, right hand gets in that rhythm of squeeze, relax, squeeze, relax, squeeze, relax. If I didn't do that, if I just held it with one firmness the whole time, it wouldn't sound horrible, but it would lose some of its character. Listen to how it sounds if I just keep what I would call a medium grip with my pick the whole time. Okay, listen to the, the difference in the sound. It loses a little bit of the personality, I'll tell you right now. Can you hear that? Now let's focus on my right hand, stay in the right hand here. Now notice once I start that squeeze, relax, squeeze, relax, a little personality comes out. Now we want that because as we get into fancier stuff, what we're gonna talk about today, we want those heavier notes to come out nice and clear. All that kind of stuff. We want those notes to pop out a little bit uh, and we want those strums to sort of remain light background. You'll see, you know, your ears will, uh, will, will help you hear the difference as we start playing. Okay, so boom chicka strum, but with some embellishments. The first thing we're going to talk about, the main thing we're going to talk about today is bass note runs. Okay, bass note runs. What does that mean? That means using your bass notes, your heavier strings, to connect two chords. Uh, when I show this to my students, 99% of them immediately recognize the sound. As soon as I start playing it, you can just see a light go on their head and think, oh, there's that sound I've heard for many years. I never knew how they did that. And it can seem strange to think that one guitar player is doing it while that same guitar player is also strumming those light strings, okay? I'm gonna play for you for a minute here. I'm gonna be playing G to C. Those of you who are experienced guitar players, I hope you grabbed your guitar too. Play along with me, you can play some lead guitar. I'm gonna be playing uh, G and C back and forth, and I'm going to be using a bass note run to connect the two, okay? And, uh, and then I'll talk about it. I'll play it for a minute first. Here we go, the boom chicka strum with the bass note run. I'll do it a little bit faster just for the fun of it. Now, the first time I heard a, a fellow doing it in a bluegrass uh, band was the first time I saw someone playing hard and fast, you know, much faster than what I just did. It blew me away. I never heard anyone play that fast. I didn't know you could do that because it sounded like two guitar players, that beautiful contrast. Um, but having said that, it's not only bluegrass players who employ this technique. Lots of people use it, and they may modify it to fit their specific style of rhythm guitar. By the way, rhythm guitar, you can't go wrong spending time working on rhythm guitar because it's what we get asked to do most often as guitar players. It's an accompanying style. Whether you're accompanying a singer or an instrumentalist of some sort, the more ways you know to play rhythm guitar, the more tools you have in your rhythm guitar toolkit, the more opportunities you have to play with other people. I know a lot of people who can play the guitar, but they don't get to play with other people very much for one reason or another. Well, the skills that we're talking about, uh, not just in today's program, but in other programs that I hope you'll watch, will give you tools that will help you play with other people because music is a social thing. And uh, even with limited skills, you can really help um, create a, a big sound. Meaning, if all I did was sit here and strum a G chord, see, that's all I was good at. A more experienced guitar player would take that foundation and they'd start. And they'd be having a ball. They'd be grateful that you're keeping a nice steady beat on that G chord, okay? So whether you're capable of doing just one chord at a time or if you're capable of much more as a rhythm guitar player, Find someone to play with, especially someone who's a little more experienced than you. Believe me, they'll be grateful because all the fancy lead guitar playing in the world, all that, all that, you know, kind of stuff, 
doesn't really sound that great after about three minutes doing it on your sofa at home. But if you have someone else in the background playing chords or some sort of rhythm guitar, the whole thing comes to life. So I, I'm hoping to kind of empower you uh, guitar players out there, especially those of you who are beginners or you're kind of blowing off the dust, to pick up on some of these rhythm guitar skills and then find a buddy to play with, because um, that's what it's all about. Okay, so connecting the G and C. Let's talk about what I just did there, that bass note run, that connected G and C. Okay, the idea is we're doing the boom chicka strum, but in a beautiful way, we, in an uninterrupted sort of way, we glide into the next chord. In this case, it's a G gliding into a C chord. And if I do my job right, it, it sounds seamless. There are so many zillions of songs that go from G to C, it's nice to find a, a nice way to connect them, you know, a musical way, a catchy way to connect them. Okay, so let's focus on the left hand for a second. Those of you who have your guitars handy, I'm hoping that you're picking up on my G chord here with my left hand again, middle ring and pinky, okay? Middle ring and pinky. My pointer finger is doing nothing. It might look like it's pressing, but trust me, it's, it's not doing anything, okay? If you've played this G before, great. Today is the day to, to make it happen. If you've never done this kind of G before, then now's the time to pick up on it. G, and the next chord is C, okay? G and C. Now, I'm gonna single out two very specific notes, one from each chord. When I hold down a G chord, that note right there, ring finger, fat string, that's the note G, okay? So when I hold down a G chord, there's my note G, that's known as the root note. Very important term for rhythm guitar players, the root note. If you've heard it before, great. If you haven't, it's the note that shares the name of the entire chord. It's a G major chord, that's the note G, okay? Memorize it, <laughs> okay. now. When I hold down a C chord, the root note is now found right there, okay? C chord, C major, and there's my root note on the fifth string. G, root note's on the sixth string. C, it's on the fifth string, okay? You wanna memorize those two things because our job now, if we wanna make a good musical sound as a rhythm guitar player, is to connect that note while we're strumming a G chord, that one right there, with this note when we're on the C chord, okay? To connect those two notes musically. If I don't connect those two notes musically, if I just do my boom chicka strum, song doesn't sound bad. It sounds like this. And hopefully you've done something like that before. But by using this bass note run, it makes you sound like a more advanced player because you are a more advanced player. It, it uh, elevates the song to another level. It shows whoever you're playing with that you're capable of some, some musical sounds beyond what a beginner can do. So, you ready? I'm gonna need you to focus in closely on my left hand for the next few minutes here. Because as a guitar player watching this, hopefully from the comfort of your home, what we're gonna do right now is all about your left hand, okay? So, again, G to C, right? Okay, so here's what we're gonna do. The, the run that's gonna connect these two chords involves four notes. One, two, three, four. Notice we began on the root note G from a G chord, and we ended on the C, the root note of the C chord. Okay, so here's how it connected them. I'm gonna play it a few times, and then I'll talk about it. There are a lot of visual learners out there who would much rather see it than hear a teacher talk about it. Open fifth string. Okay, some of you might have picked up on it right from that. For those of you who want a verbal description, <clears throat> we have sixth string, three. Three means third fret. Fifth string, open, no fingers. Fifth string, also known as the A string. Fifth string, second fret. Please use your middle finger. <clears throat> Life or death, you gotta use your middle finger because that leads so nicely <clears throat> into the fifth string, third fret. You gotta use your ring finger, because don't forget, there's our final destination, the C chord. Ring, open, middle, ring, ring, open, middle, ring. So I'm hoping you have a guitar handy, and you're gonna do this with me, okay? <clears throat> if this feels easy, great. But if this feels like a little bit of a challenge, I'm gonna do it a bunch of times in a row here, and I want you to do it with me. 
By the way, for those of you who are experienced guitar players and you can do this in your sleep, keep your eyes on what I'm doing here because I'm hoping that the way I'm teaching today can help you teach your cousin, your friend, your buddy, your neighbor how to play this style so you can get them up to speed so you can do all your fancy advanced guitar licks and all the crazy stuff that you know how to do and they can keep up with you as a rhythm guitar player. So hopefully the way I'm teaching is the way that you can use to teach someone in your life. Okay, so left hand. I'm gonna start doing a little bit more slowly. If there's one thing I've learned, teaching slowly gets results, okay? Sixth string, fifth string open. Musically, the names are G, A, B, C. G, A, B, C. For those of you who are learning this for the first time, the more you do this, the better. And doing it twice is not enough. Intellectually, there's a part of your brain that has, you know, two minutes ago you got this and that part of your brain is done with it. That doesn't mean your fingers have, have mastered it. Uh, for any of you who have tried the guitar even for a day or a week, you've realized that there's a little disconnect between the intellectual part of your brain that's, that understands your task and these, these crazy uh, digits here that don't quite seem to do what you want them to do, at least not yet, okay? So uh, keep in mind that for a beginning or really any guitar player learning a new skill, it takes a lot of repetition, a lot of repetition. The good news is that's all it takes. Once you intellectually understand your job, you just have to do it dozens of times. If you, if you uh, set a little timer, whether it's on your phone or a kitchen timer, and you set it for one minute, and you practice this particular run, G, A, B, C, for one minute solid, you'd be surprised in 60 seconds you can go a long way towards establishing muscle memory, okay? I call it a minute of pain when I teach my students, the minute of pain, okay? You do something for 60 seconds. It's gonna be the longest minute you've experienced for a while. But you do this for a solid minute, two minutes if you're brave, that goes a long way towards getting into your muscle memory, okay? Now, if you're with me so far, what we're going to do is put this into context. We just took it out of context there. Remember, our context is the boom chicka strum connecting G to C. I chose those two chords, number one, because they're, they're not too hard. They're not as hard as some other chords, but also they're extremely common chords. Okay, so we might as well give you a practical um, application, a practical context for learning what we're learning today. By the way, I'd love to hear from you. Any uh, questions you have, feel free to email me any of your questions. Before the end of the show, you'll see an email address you can email or uh, give a phone call. Happy to a answer any of your questions. I've been teaching for about 20 years now and uh, I've answered a lot of questions and usually it's the smartest students who ask questions. So you can be one of those people too. Send me an email. Okay, so here we go. G to C in context. I'm going to play it for a minute and then I'll break it down and talk about it. Here we go. Here's my boom chicka strum. And just to whet your appetite, the day is going to come when you can play it a lot faster than that because I know you're going to practice this. Here's what it's going to sound like if you give yourself couple weeks, a couple months, you practice it, here's what you're going to sound like. Now, realistically, say you're playing a song and you're the singer or your, your friend is singing, a family member is singing, the bass note run sounds great. It can be used sparingly. I just did it over and over again to, to illustrate it. But realistically, in a song, you might not use it quite as often as I just played it, you know? You might be on a G chord for a lot longer. And then finally the C chord comes. And you get to use it. And then you get to use it again, backwards in reverse. 
But when you practice it, it's good to practice it as many times as possible within your limited practice time. If you're like most of us, you don't have tons of time to practice every day. So it's good to have something very specific to focus on, like what we're doing today. Okay, so check this out. Here's my G chord, sixth string, brushing, fourth string, brushing, sixth string. Okay, we're good with that boom chicka. Now watch what I do. I go six, four, six, six, A, B, C. Let's do that again. Sixth string, fourth string. Now here's where the fun begins. G, G, A, B, C. I'll do it again a little more slowly. G chord, six, four, six, six, A, B, C. And I'm kind of exaggerating the minimum amount of fingers that I need. You know, I'm lifting away from my G chord, partly for illustration purposes, so you can see what's happening is not, is not a full G chord. Meaning, once you start that bass note run, really what you truly need is just that one finger right there, that ring finger. I'll do it a few more times, here it comes. Six, four, six, six, open string, second fret, C, and once I land on that ring finger, I'm in the world of C. Chords, chords are beautiful, powerful tools in music. Um, I really want you to think of it as you're entering a whole new world, a new realm, whatever, you know, whatever works for you, a new plane. Now you're in the world of C major, and you were in the, uh, the world of G major, okay? So I'm hoping that this is starting to sink in a little bit, because in a minute we're gonna do the reverse, okay? We're gonna do a C chord, doing a bass note run back down to a G chord. We'll do that in a second. Okay, here comes the G again. Okay, now, once you get there, that note right there, that C that I just ended on, that actually is the last note of the run, but it's the first note of my new boom chicka pattern on a C chord. Watch this. See how it led in? Hopefully that sounded smooth and seamless to you. I'll do it one more time. Okay, now our program's gonna be over before you know it, so I'm gonna make sure you know how to walk back down to G. And by the way, lots of chords any chords can be connected this way. I'm choosing G and C as an example. Find yourself a good teacher and they'll show you how to connect A and D and E and A and all those things, okay? Now, I'm in the world of C and here's gonna, I'm gonna walk down to the G chord, okay? Watch this. Left hand, C chord, here it comes. Second fret, open, sixth string, and that puts me in the world of G. So important to use ring to middle to open to ring finger. Okay, C chord again, going back to G. Here it comes. Hopefully I make that look easy. It is easy with practice. Here it comes again. The boom chicka strum on C with a bass note run down to G. I'm going to do it one more time, and then I'm going to uh, play it over and over again. G to C, C to G, make it sound musical. Here it comes. C one last time, going down to G. Okay, what we're doing today, by the way, this bass note run within the context of the boom chicka rhythm guitar, what we're doing today is fundamental guitar. Uh, you know, life is too short to, to waste time just doing little esoteric stuff. Let's use today's program to, uh, to teach you something that you're going to use in so many contexts, so many types of music, including writing your own songs. Okay, so if you're still with me here, let's do the G major chord with a bass note run up to C, and without even stopping, we're going to head back on down to the G chord again. I'm going to go as slowly as I can, but then I'm going to start picking up the speed a little bit. Those of you who are lead guitar players, now's your chance to join in. 
okay, with your G major scales, G major pentatonic scales. Okay, here we go. Try to keep things slow in the beginning. Here we go. One, two, G chord, go. Pick up the speed just a little bit. Okay, how'd that work for you? Can you keep up with that? Now, if you could play it, or almost play it at that tempo, you're well on your way. Okay, uh, someone who's never done that before, I wouldn't expect anyone to be able to, like that to be able to pick this up and, and play it just like I did on their first try. But give yourself a couple of days, a couple of weeks, it's worth it. A friend of mine uh, mentioned something to me that I thought was valuable, I'll share it with you. He said, people overestimate what they can accomplish in a week, but they underestimate what they can accomplish in a year. Okay, so give yourself some time because a skill like this whether it takes you a week or a year to master it, it's something you're going to use for the rest of your guitar playing life, okay? So give yourself time. I tell my students the patience, their, their own patience is the biggest variable. The, the guitar is not going to change, um, the material is not going to change, but your patience is probably the best asset you have as you learn to play any musical instrument. Okay, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to play a little bit for you. I'm going to get a little bit faster as we wrap up today's program. My G and C. You might notice I throw in a few little other embellishments that we'll talk about at a future time. I hope you enjoyed today's program. Again, my name is Jonathan Kiyu. You've been watching The Music Corner. Uh, send us an email or uh, give us a phone call if you have any questions. Or maybe there's something that you'd like to learn about on the guitar that I haven't covered today. Uh, and I'd love to hear from you. Okay? Thanks for watching, and I'll play out here with my G and C, with my bass note runs, and if you look closely, I'll throw in a few extra embellishments in as well. Here we go.